Yes, the show and the fever on the show is still on because things are red hot right now. Lots of things, including, of course, as promised, the Mobile World Congress coverage continues on the show. This would be show two. But a lot has happened here back in India. So we'll take you through all of that, including, of course, this one. This is the Samsung S10. When I do the review, I actually have a question for all of you at the end of it. So lots of things to cover on the show. Let's get started on Selguru today. The new and bright stars in Samsung's Galaxy are here. We get our hands on the Galaxy S10 Plus, test out all its features on the camera and tell you if these are the flagship phones you should be looking at. Our journey through Mobile World Congress continues, this time with the most talked about feature, 5G. We take a look at 5G-ready phones, automobiles and other technology that is all powered by Qualcomm. P2i showcases its new waterproof technology for phones called Dunkable. And we have some fun plopping phones into water to check this out. And just like I said, even on the news part of it, so much happening here in India, it almost seems like there's a parallel MWC going on right out here. So Realme came up with their brand new Realme 3. Oppo came up with another great phone. Take a look at the launches. After the more budget-friendly Oppo K1, Oppo has launched the new F11 Pro in India. Priced at 24,990 rupees, the Oppo F11 Pro comes with a 4,000 mAh battery, MediaTek Helio P70 chipset and 6GB RAM. This is Oppo's first attempt at a phone with no notch and it comes with a full-view display and a pop-up selfie camera with a 16MP lens. There is a dual rear camera with 48MP primary sensor and 5MP lens. The Oppo F11 was also launched with a water drop notch and 4GB RAM for 19,990 rupees. The phones will go on sale after 15th March and the Oppo F11 Pro will be available in two gradient color variants, Thunder Black and Aurora Green. Stepping down the price ladder a bit is Realme, who is back with the all-new Realme 3. The phone sports a unibody gradient design and comes with the MediaTek Helio P70 processor. There is a 4230mAh battery on board with a 13 and 2 megapixel camera on the rear. And there is a 13 megapixel lens on the front. The Realme 3 starts at 8,999 rupees for the 3GB RAM and 32GB storage variant. While the 4GB RAM 64GB storage variant is priced at 10,999 rupees. The phone will be available in three color variants, including a radiant blue color. And now, of course, it's time for this one. I will unbox one for you. I know we've shown you these phones before. We've spoken about some part of it in the previews also. But now it's time to actually unbox one of them. This is the Samsung Galaxy S10. What I have is the S10 Plus. And I'm going to show you two colors. So our review unit was a blue colored one. And then we've got the white, especially for you, because the white almost came as a big surprise. Almost no one knew about the fact that the white was going to come to India. So I'll unbox this for you and showcase exactly what it looks like. So as we can see, the rest of it is all the same. Bilkul wohi cheez hai, but now to get that color out. So as you can see, this then is the white from Samsung. As you can also see, I'm literally with my magical fingers holding it and it's floating in the air. No, it's not. I'm holding it with the plastic tag. So lots about this phone. Uh, but I have to tell you the two or three things that really set it apart. So the design part of it, the screen with that punch hole camera is the other thing. We will talk about that in the review that because it's got two cameras in the front, does the punch hole become too much? Then we've got the fact that it's actually got optics like no other phone. It's got wireless charging. So they also released the Samsung Buds. Just put the entire case of the Buds behind the phone and you can actually charge that or any other phone and does it pretty quick. So one is wireless charging, one is doing it quick enough for it to really make a difference. So like I said, we'll take a quick look at this. Of course, like I said, the blue review phone. But when I come back, I have a question for you. There's a new star in the galaxy and this one will make you look at it with awe while contemplating how to muster up the ransom being demanded to own it. We have the new and shiny Samsung S10 Plus with us for review and we're here to answer the question. Is this the S10 you want to own considering the options Samsung has laid out before you in this new flagship range? There is the S10, the bigger S10 Plus and of course the S10e, a more affordable option. For this review, we'll stick to the bigger Galaxy phone, the S10 Plus. Let's start out with the display. The S10 Plus comes with a massive 6.4-inch edge-to-edge screen and the big deal here is Samsung's next-generation Infinity-O display with a punch-hole design for the front-facing cameras. 
While the sponge hole design does look a lot like a notch, but we're not complaining because of the wallpapers which make the screen look almost bezel-less. And yes, this is the biggest Samsung screen on a phone yet. So what you get is a 93.1% screen to body ratio which doesn't disappoint. The colours are vivid in daylight and might we add, with great detailing. The display also deserves a special mention for having HDR10 Plus support for superior contrast which makes content consumption a delight on this phone. We also get an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor on the front and we hear that Qualcomm's ultrasonic technology makes this more secure than some Chinese flagships. We tried unlocking the phone with a wet finger and it still worked, though not as quickly as optical scanners. In display, ultrasonic uh, fingerprint is a world's first uh, that Samsung Galaxy S10 is bringing in. It makes your uh, information in the phone as secure as a vault because it really sends out waves ultrasonic sound waves into the phone in the in display and through that there's no spoofing possible. So whether it's uh, wet conditions or it's uh, uh, extreme uh, weather conditions, you'll be able to use it and no one can spoof your information away. The prism blue colour is reflective and looks stunning in daylight though it is a fingerprint magnet. The S10 Plus, unlike the iPhone XS Max, which seems to be its competition when it comes to specs and price, is very comfortable to hold. And of course, you get Gorilla Glass 6 on both front and back, which we are thankful for. There's a dedicated Bixby button below the volume rocker, which feels a bit redundant. Like all Samsung phones, this one also has a 3.5mm headphone jack, which gets a thumbs up from us. The S10 Plus runs on Android 9 Pie, coated with Samsung's own One UI, which is quite different from stock Android, frankly. The S10 Plus runs on the new chip on the block, literally, but that depends on the part of the world you're in. While US markets can enjoy the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855, which makes the phones faster, smoother and more battery efficient, India has to settle for Samsung's own Exynos 9820 chip. A screen like this demands a mammoth battery and the new Samsung S10 Plus comes with 4100mAh of juice, giving us around two days of moderate usage. We also tried Samsung's new wireless power share feature, which transforms the back of the S10 Plus into a big Qi charging mat. We tried charging the Galaxy Buds with it and it worked well. The S10 Plus comes with a triple lens rear camera setup with a 12 megapixel regular lens, a 12 megapixel telephoto lens, and a new 16 megapixel ultra wide lens. Our images were vivid with great detailing, but the real prowess of the camera is in its ultra wide lens, so you can fit a lot into a single image. And if you turn on the scene optimizer feature, the inbuilt AI will give you the best shot suggestion, which is helpful while framing. There is a dual front shooter with a 10 megapixel and 8 megapixel lens, and selfies are pretty flawless if that's what you're after. Live focus, bokeh, and other options work well. And for anyone looking for Instagrammable photos, this phone can do it all. Now, Samsung believes there's an S10 for everyone. The Galaxy S10 starts at Rs 66,900, the S10 Plus at Rs 73,900, and a more affordable S10e starts at Rs 55,900. Storage options go right up to a whopping 1 TB. The Cell Guru verdict. The Samsung S10 Plus leaves no room for complaints. Its display, fingerprint sensor, wireless power share feature and battery life make a strong case to buy the phone right away. But at nearly 74,000 rupees for the base model of the S10 Plus, Samsung has made a sizable hike from the last Galaxy phone, attracting competition from the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. But if a reliable phone with excellent specs backed by a mighty brand is on your shopping list, your search stops now. And we've seen the Samsung Galaxy S10 and it's all its unique features and specifications and of the S10 Plus as well. But it's actually time to see some of these features come to life. Well, over here, this unique display at the Samsung booth uses around 324 Samsung Galaxy S10s to create this really amazing display which even responds to motion. But not just this, let's watch some of these features actually come to life. What do I mean by that? Well, get ready to watch me dance. That then was our extra special bonus, uh, slow motion dancing with Sanjana out there. I mean, the wall was okay, but that dancing, that really set the show on fire. But you know, I don't get to do those things, and neither do I have any dancing walls, no dancing anchors that you only get from Sanjana. The two questions I have for you are these. The first one is, 
when you have a flagship phone and you have a whole year that you wait for a flagship phone to come, suppose you were you owned the S9. Do you want an economy version of a flagship phone? Isn't that kind of a bit of an oxymoron? So the E version of this, which is a little bit cheaper, uh, why would someone be buying something like this? And I really want to know your overall opinion. If you were saving up to buy an S phone for seven, eight thousand rupees, would you buy a slightly cheaper version that doesn't have the look, the curved screen and everything else? That's my question. The second one, of course, is to do with the notch. We did speak about the fact that with all the special wallpapers on this phone, the notch almost disappears. But that punch hole camera that it has, two of them that it has. What about other areas like when you're web browsing, watching a movie or a game? Should it only be one or should punch hole cameras also be used for two? Those are my two questions. Now back to MWC, lots of special stuff from there. Tech enthusiasts, journalists and industry experts throng to Barcelona for the biggest mobile show in the world. Mobile World Congress 2019 And while foldable phones took center stage this time, I took a sneak peek at all the fun tech as well, from dancing robots to fancy drones, from virtual reality to flexible displays even on hats, from a peekaboo at space tech to 5G finally being a reality. Mobile World Congress this year had it all. And now, of course, let's go to Qualcomm. I think a lot of people at Mobile World Congress actually said this, that Qualcomm owned it because of the 5G part of it. Literally anywhere and everywhere you went, either Qualcomm had its demos or other companies were announcing Qualcomm 5G phones. So literally it owned that space out there, which I think is a great thing. But at this present moment, what Sanjana is doing out there, no, 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 I'm really sorry to disappoint you. She's not dancing again. I wish it was true. But this time she's in an autonomous car. Well, yes, Rajiv, I am all ready to zoom off in an autonomous vehicle, if you please. Well, that's why I'm in the passenger seat. As you can see, there's no driver here next to me. But the fun doesn't stop at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. I am at the Qualcomm booth where they've got so many 5G demos out here. This is just one of them. This is to do with autonomous vehicles and AI and, you know, how it can actually detect a pedestrian crossing from miles away right before the car is going to enter. But this is just one of them. They've also got a lot of demos to do with phones. Of course, Qualcomm has got their Snapdragon 855 into phones now to actually show 5G speeds. So 5G is actually becoming a reality here. Let's take a look at some of these cool demos that Qualcomm has got right here. Autonomous cars, 5G connectivity for automobiles and 5G splashed around. Qualcomm left no stone unturned with 5G capabilities and new technologies that the company showcased at Mobile World Congress. On the automobile front, they had a mock-up of an autonomous car on display with high-speed AI detecting and predicting pedestrian behaviour and a display that used their new Snapdragon 8155 Gen 3 chip for all infotainment needs as well. But connected cars are really the future and Qualcomm also announced 4G and 5G connectivity through a new connected experience in the car. This is a Wi-Fi 6 chip which will help automotive manufacturers deliver in-vehicle and out-of-vehicle communication. High-speed video streaming, in-car internet access and hands-free calling are some of the other functions this will enable. But coming to 5G being more of a reality in our daily lives. Well, finally, a slew of 5G phones were launched at Mobile World Congress, but most of them had one thing in common, which was their enabler, the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chipset. This is the first 5G chipset for phones and comes with a 4G LTE connection and low latency. And this chipset is providing cloud and network providers to do a lot more as well. The fourth generation Qualcomm AI engine capabilities in this chipset was showcased at MWC. This was a demo of denoising a picture to give it more clarity. While this allows for images to be more sharp and the bokeh is adjustable even in the front camera, 3D pictures can now be made with a simple click and of course, Google Lens allows for all the text to be read with clarity. The AI picks out chunks of the text, all this is much faster and more precise. While the new 855 chipset sports an LTE modem, Qualcomm has gone a step ahead and launched the world's first 5G modem, the Snapdragon X55. This is a single-chip multi-mode solution which will allow for 5G multi-mode devices. This will theoretically be ready to support download speeds of up to a whopping 5 Gbps. This will also allow for high data speeds to function even in low network areas and it will drastically improve smartphone battery life as well. And while good speed in poor network areas is like music to our ears, 
Here is a technology that will enable high data speeds and coverage for all, even in a very crowded place. Well, Qualcomm showcased its small cell platform at MWC, which forms an important component in LTE and 5G network planning and can help network operators to cost-effectively provide indoor and outdoor capacity, coverage and performance for users, even in the most crowded environments. But other than all the network and heavy-duty technology, Qualcomm also has a major role to play in wearables and they showcase their Snapdragon Wear 3100 meant just for wearables. And amongst all this high-tech 5G technology, the big question still remains. Are we in India going to see 5G soon? For India, um, and the government is, uh, of India is working through those spectrums, they'll have the auctions. I think the benefit for India is going to be, is uh, like 4G, it took a few years to have that come to India. You're not going to have that delay. I actually think you're going to see India in 2020 with 5G. And that'll be important. Uh, with 5G, that'll put India in a very good position with its large base of very qualified engineers to start to develop new products and services based on 5G and that will allow them to really take advantage of what I would call Industry 4.0. Well, the road to 5G is still being paved in India, but Qualcomm seems all set to power most facets of it with a finger in every pie. And another company that made us very proud out there, maybe the only company, Indian company, Indian manufacturer that actually made super headlines at the MWC. Five phones came out from Centric, but there's one phone that truly stood out, a phone with a pop-out camera. We'll show you the phones. We also spoke with the founder and CEO. It's always good to spot an Indian company making waves at an international show like the Mobile World Congress. And Priyanka Telecom owned Centric made quite a splash at MWC this year with some five new smartphones. We got a glimpse at the Centric S1 which is priced at around $310 which is a little more than 21,000 rupees and comes with a pop-up selfie camera. It also comes with a 3800 mAh battery with the new Pump Express fast charge technology which claims to charge to 50% in just about 20 minutes. The phone also sports an in-display fingerprint scanner which is great at this price point. The Centric S1 has minimal bezel, sports an AMOLED display and comes loaded with the mighty MediaTek Helio P70 octa-core processor and is available in 64GB and 128GB variants. As far as optics go, the phone comes with an 8MP front pop-up selfie camera and a 16MP plus 5MP dual rear camera. And that's not all, the company also launched four more smartphones. The Centric L4 starting at $90, the A2 for $140, the G5 for $160 and the highest variant of the lot, the Centric G3 priced at about $250. Let's see what the company has to say about its new launches. It's a very proud moment for us to be at MWC this year. We have launched five new phones over here, S1 being uh, the flagship phone. Uh, it's a really state-of-art phone with a pop-up camera. Uh, in fact, the camera quality uh, is quite superb. Uh, we have put a, a wireless charging into it, a very good AMOLED screen, a fingerprint sensor on screen. We have put a, a very good AMOLED display on this and a 3800 mAh battery. So for us, our consumer is very important. We have been working very hard in our R&D team and the supply chain management to bring the price points and the quality of the products at the same time. Centric Smartphones plans to bring these phones to India come June and we'll be bringing you detailed reviews of all of them on Cellguru. On the Cellguru show, we'll take a quick break when we come back lots more from the Mobile World Congress. Now let's move on to something that I believe should be standard by law and that is the relationship between water or liquids and phones. Now I truly believe that water and electronics which have a really bad relationship should actually be bunking together, should actually be in bed together but they're not even seeing each other. But now there's a company P2i that can actually make this happen. They have some fantastic technology once you have that in your phone, your phone and all liquids, boy are they going to have a good time. Gone are the days where a splash of water would cause immense panic in smartphone users. And at Mobile World Congress, one company flaunted and splashed their waterproof technology all around. This is P2i that has also come in the recent Redmi Note 7 Pro, which has the coating and which makes it splash proof. But their new technology Dunkable makes phones water resistant to IPX8, which basically translates to being waterproof till around 3 meters. 
So at their stall, they immersed this phone with Dunkable and left it there for around 20 hours and more and showcased how it was still on and running. They even had holes drilled in and once submerged, it released bubbles too. Yet the phone was fine and running. This nanotechnology P2i claims does not degrade with time and on the inside of the phone, it leaves more space than regular waterproof technologies for things like battery or now even 5G capabilities. The booth drew large crowds at Mobile World Congress to see phones being plopped into water. That then was the Cell Guru Show for this week. But do remember, lots of great stuff coming in. I mean, see the amount of launches that have happened in India that we've not been able to cover. So all of that coming in. Which is your next phone that you're about to buy in the next few weeks? I think next week has that answer.